Hey everyone, welcome to uh, today's webinar uh, between Cargo Chief and 3PL Systems. Um, specifically, we'll be going over our uh, digital freight matching integration with 3PL Systems TMS Brokerware. Uh, so this is going to be kind of more of an informative session covering that integration. I'm um, talking about the integration and getting into the workflow a little bit later. I've got Anderson Fund Technical Support Manager over there at uh, 3PL Systems. Um, and myself, Chris Arredondo, co-founder and I don't know, you could call it VP of, of uh, hatware, pretty much everything customer related here at Cargo Chief. So if th there's not a hat unturned that I haven't worn. <laughs> uh, as a quick agenda, uh, we're going to set the stage and, and kind of talk about the path, um, both what we here at Cargo Chief saw and how we could work together um, and grow together alongside 3PL systems. Um, we'll also get into a little bit uh, about that digital freight matching, what it is, and how it's different from some of the other solutions out there. Uh, before we hop into a live demo uh, towards the end uh, with, with Anderson, I'll be sharing some kind of overall results from some of our other customers and looking at what you can expect uh, to gain from, from our take, uh, I guess, on, on booking freight. Um, so let's talk about why this path forward, what, why we chose this together and how this, I guess, kind of came together. We've known the guys there at 3PL Systems for a while now, um, see, seen each other at conferences and things over the last last three, four years, and started to see a lot of um, mutual customers coming on board. Uh, Cargo Chief, we hear, we offer kind of two sorts of solutions. One, there's an off-the-shelf product, and then there's that integrated experience <coughs> where most customers see that immediate ROI and that high product adoption that we like to see with that integration. A little bit more, we're a freight tech company uh, that solves some of the indus industry's biggest issues, not just when it comes to uh, blanket capacity, but that sporadic capacity, and not just pricing, but the uh, more, more so inaccuracies and volatility of the market. And third, kind of that data fragmentation in the sense that there's not really one place that centralizes information uh, that serves it up so a broker can book more freight um, or price competitive enough to win more freight. Uh, so we kind of naturally thought it made sense to, to try to deliver that same experience to those on 3PL systems and those on C4 um, that I'll talk a little bit more about later. But from here, I guess, Anderson, can you give us a little background um, on 3PL systems and, and kind of talk a little bit more about the integration and, and what you guys do there, I guess, there with Brokerware? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, with Brokerware, we're a super strong LTL platform. You know, we have our, you know, we have our LTL rating engine where we're integrated with, you know, LTL carriers and our clients, you know, can, Put in, put in their information and pull rates for all these LTL carriers, but somewhere where, you know, we, we kind of rely on, on partners like yourself, Cargo Chief, is to have, is to provide a tool for truckload capacity. So, you know, load boards haven't changed much and Cargo Chief really expands the carrier reach and makes it easier for carriers to work, you know, with brokers. So and it also helps to reuse carriers and makes it less transactional based and really more relationship based between the brokers and the carriers. Yeah, I, I know uh, you guys have some really strong rating tools um, that mostly this integration is really on that that digital freight matching. But at the same time, you know, for those that are on 3PL systems or brokerware today, you're really going to get get a different feel on on that carrier expansion and what, what a really robust carrier network can do for you. I'm going to try to launch a poll here. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this properly or not, but I'm going to do my best. Um, let's see here. So this is more so along your network. I think I'm gonna click launch. Should see something pop up. I'm gonna I'm gonna see if I start seeing some answers and that'll tell me yes or no. All right, there we go. I saw saw some things starting to come through. So it's a really polar polar question. Um, are you satisfied with your carrier network? Yes or no? You're you're looking for kind of more options, kind of thing. So we'll give it a little bit to to have some of you answer that. <laughs> Chris, would you mind checking the lobby to see if there's any more attendees that are trying to get in? Uh, everyone should be in here. Should allow. Yeah, everyone's everyone is in. Uh, I think webinar is a slightly different than like meeting, so it kind of lets you in, like as you start the webinar. So it looks Got looks it. like okay. is in. I'll make sure no one's sitting on the couch there, just in case. <laughs> Uh, so, so it looks, uh, I'm going to go ahead and end the poll. We've got uh, a good, good bit of answers here. Maybe give it about 15 more seconds. Pretty easy, easy question. Yes or no. Are you satisfied with your network? 
uh give it one more we got one more person can we get one more person i feel like a an auctioneer it should be like who does two hundred dollars there we go all right i'm gonna end the poll i'm gonna share the results here um hopefully everyone can see it there on your screen i moved it over so the question are you satisfied with your carrier network yes looks like some of you are good good bid are looking for more options which you know is kind of the name of the game here i think me being um in my my day of book and freight, like it was always about options and seeing what I could do, <laughs> what I could do to serve my customers. And that option could be a thousand dollars over what I want to pay, but as long as that freight gets moved, I've got you know a good relationship going with my customer. And not all the time is that first option the one that you want to take. So it's you know having more is is always going to be the the better thing for you. And and if not to book freight, but to even just have some market insight into what where the market's going um i'm going to stop sharing let's see here and try to close this poll somehow and we, we're going to have a second poll a little bit later into the webinar uh we'll, we'll share those results a little bit more tied to kind of the integration um let's see so let's get into uh dfm as we call it or digital freight matching um and understand what what it's for and, and I, I know this might be a new term for for some of those. Uh, I think as the industry continues to evolve, this term will change uh, and likewise continue to evolve. Uh, today, we here at Cargo Chief kind of see it more through the lens of procurement, uh, but at the same time, like delivering that rapid capacity without all the legwork of, of booking freight and, and also at the same time, finding the right fit for that lane or load. And I, I'd say different from load boards, our DFM solution is more geared to driving in high quality options and digital carrier engagements. Um, also by mitigating the risk of who sees your freight. I think, you know, we we also put a lot of emphasis on, on that carrier retention that Anderson was talking about. And while expanding your carrier network that again, I'll talk a little bit about how that's unique to C4 here in a few slides. Um, for us, digital freight matching doesn't just stop with that quality carrier selection, but we kind of go beyond that in the, in the freight matching part by also including our uh, matching, or, sorry, by also including our, our matching current rates using our C4's pricing engine. Uh, and again, I'll talk more about that. Adding a third layer, though, to the digital and automation side, we're able to keep your carrier network up to date uh, with compliance requirements, not just like set on our side as we see fit, but also as you there in brokerware qualify or dequalify um, or even set up new carriers there in your TMS. Um, so a little bit more into how it works. And before I get to the slide, I'm out of Houston, Texas, and it is, there's some gnarly storms right now. I'm looking out the window. So <laughs> just bear, bear with me if there's a quick intermittent uh, session there. Uh, so talk, talking a little bit more about how this works, um, looking at DFM, ultimately the main reason why uh, customers lean into Cargo Chief and buy into C4, our project and procurement software is, is really to drive that digital carry engagement increase their options and to pre-book more freight. So here on this slide, we're gonna kind of look at where it all starts. As soon as your load is built there in Brokerware, that that Anderson will walk you through, that offer goes straight out to your to your carriers. The, the difference in, in the carrier quality selection is those carriers have to match our database that is continuing to grow as we're talking right now. People across the C4 network are booking freight. The second layer to that capacity solution, when the load offer goes out, you have the option to kind of use our rating tool. Oops, kind of went too, too fast there. You have the option to use our rating tool or use the, the target rate that you've got as well. So there, there's kind of two layers there that we'll, we'll walk through a little bit more here shortly. After that, your carriers kind of have a couple options at that point. They can either engage with the software, they can Click through, click through a couple buttons. Either uh, submit a counter offer, or they can accept the load that you're that you're offering them right there, just as they're working right inside of their email. We don't force them to log into a portal. We think kind of like the more clicks we give carriers, the less likely they're going to engage. And and that that one, two, three more clicks is more than what that carrier wants to do. So we we really focus on not changing their behavior and delivering these offers right to that that carrier's inbox. Um, at the same time, too, what most carriers do, and this is where your digital care engagement comes from, is they're likely just going to reply to that email. Now, the difference there is that they're not just replying. It's not a random carrier replying. It's it's going to be carriers that are in your network that you've chosen to say, like, hey, I want these guys to, to see my freight. 
uh, a lot of times what what we see in that pre-booking process <clears throat> today or the traditional method is when a, when a rep is working through a load, like let, let's say it's a Houston to Atlanta load hits the board. First, there's already a delay from when that, that user is notified when that load's available. So there's already a gap. Time is ticking by the time that load needs to get picked up. So naturally, that, that broker is going to either go through their carrier list, their top two to three that they just can recall of tribal knowledge. Then they're going to go to likely their historical carriers that have ran that load in the past. If, they, if none of those are available, they're probably going to post a load. A lot of times we know posting the load is often the first option, though. <laughs> so what, what happens is you, by the time your rep gets through that, uh, that second, third, fourth, sixth carrier in their TMS, the phone's probably already ringing with it with a carrier fall off or they're already ready to book a new load. And that pulls them out of that pre-booking process where what Cargo Chief and the C4 solution does is really just prioritize the right carrier so your team or so your rep can make, make the best next decision and focus on who they're about to reach out to rather than going through a list, calling 20 carriers, and, and what we're able to do is ser serve that up to them so they can prioritize kind of their next decision. Um, what we often see is kind of like three times more quality um, and the options that kind of surpass the other DFM tools and capacity solutions out there. Uh, so, so it's a definitely a different experience. We kind of focus more, if you think of a pipeline, um, a, a lot of some other tools will have like a big lead at, at the beginning pushing through a lot of, uh, a lot of, I guess, responses, but then the conversion drops tremendously where we try to try to focus more on like a, a steady funnel where the conversion rates and the option rates are actually something viable and that you can actually use. So that, that's a little bit on, on kind of how it works. And again, Anderson is going to walk us through that. <clears throat> Let's see if I can move on to the next slide. So talking about those two layers um, and the differentiators kind of between this, this new DFM solution there in Brokerware uh, and, and when that load actually is sent to Cargo Chief. The first, the first leg is capacity. Uh, this is where we could be sending offers um, to your carriers. That's again, often going to be three times the amount that you have in your, in your own TMS. And the reason why that option pool is increased is by the way that we aggregate that lane information on carriers. For example, hopefully this is, uh, you can see these this text here on this screenshot. Um, but here on the right, you, you may be booking, let's call it MERX or, or Merck's Global on Houston to Atlanta. Let's, let's say that's the lane that you book them on all the time, but you've never booked them on a lane like, like what we've got here, Columbus to Chicago. Uh, but since Merck's has booked that lane, Columbus to Chicago, with one of the other hundreds of brokers on C4, your carrier network has now expanded an additional lane and also any others that are being booked in the C4 network. So you may be only running Merck's Global on Houston to Atlanta, but given that they've got 244 trucks, they're probably booking freight with other brokers. You just never really knew what other lanes were out there because you never had the freight for them. So this, this allows you to not only automate that carrier retention, but also more so pre-book more freight as soon as that load hits the board. I um, mean, the second layer here is our pricing engine that I was talking about that gives a, a true prediction of that, that current market rate for up to the minute accuracy, which is really what matters at the end of the day. If you're looking at a price point, um, we're processing around 60,000 transactions a week, uh, but we, we focus on the, the action of when that load is booked rather than delivered. Uh, so that gives us kind of the capability to react to the market uh, before loads have been picked up as they're being booked. Um, so if you think like more so on the coverage side, your other rating tools may be telling you to buy buy capacity at $2,000. Let's let's say that's what the other tools are telling you that the market's going for. But if the market's already had a swing in the in the other direction, you could easily be overpaying by just, just by trusting in other, in other tools. So we often see like the more, more up to the minute accuracy you have, the better control you're going to have in, in that buy rate. So naturally in, in 3PL systems or, or brokerware, you'll, you'll have the control to kind of override your target rate with C4's rates um, if the market happens to be lower and all automated. So you don't have to kind of think about which load am I going to do this on? We can kind of do that for you in, in an automated sense. So again, relie relieving some of that chaotic nature of the business. Um, 
And I think, you know, that having a real time rate really just gives you that competitive edge, um, whether it's on the quoting side or, or the buy side when you're kind of getting, uh, getting capacity. Uh, so looking at one of our customers here, um, HTS Logistics, they're they're really a tightly integrated customer. Within the first 30 days, they started seeing not just an increase in, in that digital carrier engagement, uh, but also reduction in the cost of booking booking a load. Uh, it was pretty significant. It was something like 90% reduction. So their their costs dropped tremendously just by just by having those high quality options and all reprioritized. They also had an increase in uh, in coverage by 6%. That was roughly, if, if I remember right, it was somewhere around 7,500 new lanes. Um, and at the same time, they booked an additional 200 loads because they were able to take coverage because they had coverage on, on more lanes than what they had in the past and allowing them to gain more market share. And I think when it came down to quality, they saw another 40% jump um, in those quality options than, than what their team could provide and what the other DFM tools were doing for them. So that directly contributed to their load growth. Um, and if you wanna read more on that case study, uh, I'd be happy to share that with you. You can also check out our website, uh, cargochief.com, and it should be somewhere on that front page um, along with a couple others. So ready to get into it now, uh, made, it, made it to the live demo part. So <laughs> Anderson, I'm gonna pass this over to you. You should, should be able to share, I think should be a host. So why don't you kind of kick us off on it's, I guess kind of what, what might, this will look like with a C4 subscription. Yeah, absolutely. If, if you don't, I think you might have to close your share. Oh, yeah, there we go. There we go. Stop share. That should work. Did that work? Let's see. Oh, I, I, I'll probably need you to enable the participant. Oh, okay, sharing. there you go. I'll stop being stingy with those rights. Should be good now. Perfect. All right. So, you know, you know, like like our other integrations, you know, if you're used to going going into our integrations page in Brokerware, all you have to do is go to our other integrations, select Cargo Chief, and from here you'll see you'll see that these are what's required to enable integration in Brokerware. So you'll get a you'll see this booking assistant URL. You'll get, this this is something that's provided by Cargo Chief from either. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Your the, your account rep, Chris. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if you have a C4 subscription, you'll have a customer success manager, so you can get that directly from us. Perfect. And then you'll also see this export carrier list to CSV. This is something that's pretty critical for the Cargo Chief integration to work properly between Brookware and and C4. You, this this will allow you to download your carrier list from from Brookware and upload it to to Cargo Chief. Now, you know, whenever you add new carriers, you'll probably want to export a new list each time and and upload it to Cargo Chief as there currently isn't a um there isn't a sync between both systems as far as carriers go. So once you add that information to into the integration, you know, the label it as active or set it as active and the integration will start working. So when you're booking a shipment, you know, when you're in the full book form. You'll add your shipper. You'll add your constantee. You know, make sure you know you'll have you put you select the cor the correct mode currently for the integration to work. You'll have to have auto, bulk, drayage, hotshot, intermodal, truckload, or volume partial. And additionally, you'll have to select the equipment. So here, I'll select truckload. Go ahead and select my van. Put a target rate at sixteen seventy five. Enter your commodity, any supplementals, and then you'll have to you'll have to book the shipment of you. So it's very critical that you book the shipment because once if you save and quote it, it's not going to send to Cargo Chief. This will the shipment will only send to Cargo Chief if you book the shipment. So now that I'm booking it, if you go to your shipment notes, you'll see that this load was posted to Cargo Chief. So once 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 this is booked, the load will get sent to Cargo Chief, and you know Chris will show you how this looks like on the carrier's end. But you know, and internally, once the once the carrier books a load, you'll see that. Let's see, I have another example here. So. 
So once the carrier books the shipment on on Cargo Chief's end, you'll see that shipment is dispatched for for the carrier by Cargo Chief carrier offer. So once once this gets booked, your shipment will automatically go into dispatch as the carrier is has now taken the load. And that's pretty much it for our end, Chris. Did you want to go ahead and show show <laughs> yeah. show our audience what it looks like on your end? Yeah, it's it's pretty straightforward here. Like I, I think the beauty of of like the DFM piece is that it's it's not quite like uh it's not a load board 2.0, 3.0. It's it's really focusing on on everything, the whole option process before the load actually gets booked. And that's really where all the legwork is. And like, you know, just me booking freight like that, the, getting somebody to the point of negotiation was always the hard part, like finding the right carriers, making sure my, my loads aren't being offered to random people that I don't know. I could be risking a lot of things. I could be inflating the market myself and having control over that network and where it's going just makes for a much better experience. And I mean, the list goes on and on service levels, uh, care relationships, all, all that good stuff comes with it. Um, so I'm going to try to see if I can, I'm not sharing my screen yet. <laughs> see if I can figure out these buttons here. Um, all right. So this is kind of our, our C4 portal. You don't really have to be inside of the application, C4 application itself um, with the integration. It's it's strictly all there and through PL systems. And the good thing too is it's like, you know, we, we could just call it Atlanta to Lakeland, a, a list of carriers here. But like, why spend time calling these carriers or emailing these carriers when the system can do it for you, right? And so it's like, it, it takes a lot less pressure off of an individual rep um, having to email carriers individually or thinking about who they're going to email or even like compiling a list together. Like all, all of that stuff is time wasted and, and time could be spent better somewhere else right uh so here i'm gonna see if i can find that uh find that load that we had a test on looks like i've got it right here so through the um through the uh the subscription you, you can customize your templates uh, it's it's pretty important for deliverability. We have some common suggestions. Uh, we're somewhere around like 98% deliverability. Um, our bounce rates are less than 1% and so are unsubscribe rates. Uh, so we do a, a pretty good job, I'd say, at like masking this to make it look like it's coming from a real person. You can include your, your company logo. You can set whatever person you want. You can include whatever details you want. Um, the, the goal here is to really get the carrier to open the email, number one, and two, the call to action. Is it getting them to reply or getting them to engage with the software? So we see a lot of carriers just replying. That's why we ask we ask things in more of like a question format because that, that's really what they're used to doing. Um, so here from, from this standpoint, this is again, just a generic email. We, we customize everything um, later. We'll open this in a window here. Drag this over. So this is kind of what the carrier would see. Uh, once, if they did engage with the software, this is, these are kind of their options. I'll see a few more load details. Again, whatever you want them to see. Um, and they, they can counter back with a different activity date, or sorry, pickup date and delivery date. You can also counter back with a different bid. Uh, so if, if you guys offered them 1675, they can come back and say 1700 or whatever it is. Um, they'll click counter back. That counter offer goes right back to 3PL systems or brokerware, sorry. Um, right back there in the TMS, uh, you as like a, a user, like if you're not, I mean, naturally people aren't going to be like just sitting there looking at a load, waiting for it to change. <laughs> so we also send you notifications. Um, you can either get those by email, or if you have the application open, you can get a little, there'll be like a little no notification down here at the bottom right, but also your little bell will go off um, if there is kind of a, an offer made and that offer will come back your email also and it'll look something like this uh, you'll see the carrier what their offer is and when you click manage load you don't have to do this again through the email this is more so just kind of showing you a little bit behind the scenes 
when you click manage load, <coughs> it'll take you to your loads tab. Uh, should probably be this one. Um, and it, it'll kind of say like a carrier, whatever carrier was there. Um, and you can kind of manage the load from this point. Uh, I don't think that was the right load. That's probably a different one. They're all the same. Ordinary Virginias. <laughs> here we go. Probably this one here. Uh, so that is, it'll show the counter sent from the carrier. Um, and you can just select the carrier here um, and execute that, that transaction. Again, you, you can do all this in in the TMS, like if the carrier selects this load and accepts it, it'll, I think what Anderson said, it'll just flip over to dispatch and the Raycon execution will happen like all on, on your end. So whatever settings you have configured there. So it, it makes it really, really simple. And I, I think the good thing too, is that the carriers that are replying, you know, when I was talking about that 40% that carrier engagement, those guys are, are like high, high quality options. Like they've already seen your load, the, the options that they're coming back with, it may not be like, hey, can you do 1600? But it may be like, hey, I can do this Friday. And often you've already got a load for Friday or you might know you have a load for Friday and might not have built it yet. So it really helps streamline that pre-booking process um, and, and that take decision, right? So at the same time too, like carriers might be coming back and say, I can do two of them or, hey, can it pick up at five o'clock? All these these points of negotiation, right? Like rate, weight. Sometimes you can get a pallet cut. Sometimes you can have flex on the time. Uh, so there's a lot lot of optionality that comes in that that really, you know, is from your own network and it, it drives in that carrier retention. And I again, the beauty of like the the network here is that it's it immediately like day one you're gonna three x your your option pool just because of the database that we have and the way that we uh, populate the lane information too. Um, that's pretty much it, uh, as far as like what it'll look like. Um, and again, like, you know, it's, it, if you're familiar with DFM, you may have an idea of like what that email traffic looks like for a lot of people. It's, it is a new way of booking freight. Um, it's, it doesn't have to be, you know, explosive where it's just like, you have no bandwidth to handle it anymore. I mean, it, it really depends on your freight mix, your carrier mix and all those things. Like we, we help walk you through like in, in an onboarding process and uh, more of like a customer success experience. Cause at the end of the day, like if this is something you want, then, you know, you, and you're willing to put, put the work forth to get it to work, then we're going to do that with you. Right. And we, we've seen examples hundreds of times over already. So we, we have kind of a repeatable process to make sure that um, customers are successful with that. Uh, I'm going to kind of pull up this uh, slide again here. See if I can start sharing again. There we go. Anderson, I'm, I'm gonna use you. Can you see that? <laughs> awesome, cool, cool. So kind of as we conclude here, um, just another comment on DFM. Um, and I think Anderson mentioned it too. Like a good thing about 3PL systems is that that business growth and and revenue is always going to be something that deserves attention. Some of our mostly tightly integrated customers uh, look at our DFM as a way for them to gain market share. Um, they're able to take kind of, if you think about it, more risk and take loads in volume rather than one load at a time because they know they have the coverage. They know it's going to be there and getting the freight on the books and worrying about margin later puts them in a much better position rather than spending hours trying to book a few loads with, with maybe a little bit higher margin. So again, if you're looking to book more freight, price competitively, um, and gain market share like a lot of our other customers by expanding your carry base, uh, we'll be here to talk. So um, I guess I've got another poll here. Um, if this is something you'd like to hear more about and sign up, um, consider the first 30 days of DFM on us um, here at Cargo Chief when you sign up with a subscription. I mean, if you're already a C4 customer, um, and you're you're there on on Brokerware, then happy to share share that that promotion with you as well. So just reach out to your CSM, and we'll get that going for you. To make it easier, I'm gonna launch this poll. Uh, next steps and launch. So I'm not gonna share the results for this. Uh, it's more of a personal question. So there, if, if you'd like to learn more about the integration between 3PL systems, Brokerware, TMS, and Cargo Chief, then just let us know yes or or not at this time and. Kind of, kind of go go as we will. I will probably be sharing this recording with everybody. Um, and I think, I think Anderson, you guys are probably going to promote it too for those that didn't make it. 
Um, I guess to, to that point, Anderson, how, if, if, you know, if they're customer C4 and they're looking to switch CMSs, how, how should they uh, reach out to you guys to learn more? You know, if they want to reach out, they can just, you know, shoot, either shoot me directly an email, Anderson at 3PL systems, or, you know, they have the support email. They can, they can email us there and, you know, I'll, we'll, we'll get them connected with, you know, someone on your team, or if it's, whether it's yourself or someone else, you can definitely get them connected to learn more. Cool. Not on TikTok yet. I hear a lot of companies. <laughs> I don't think yeah, I'm maybe, maybe on Instagram, but not on TikTok <laughs> yet. <laughs> right. Let's talk to Jeremy about that. Yeah, we'll we'll stick to yellow pages for now. Uh, <laughs> well, I'll get, give a couple of you a little bit more time, about 10, 15 seconds. So again, if, if you'd like to hear more about the integration, uh, may, maybe not even to to sign up, but if discussion at all or anything, you know, we're here to talk um, about other solutions. If whatever it is, I, I think, again, you know, we do a lot of webinars with the TIA and, and what they stand for is really really holds true to the industry like it's all about education and collaboration together and like if we're not doing this together then we're not going to survive another pandemic like it i think like the evolution of technology in this pandemic brought us all a lot closer uh with partnerships and technology to evolve as you guys there in the, in the brokerage world are demanding something more right and it's like it's it's just a thrill to be part of this journey um, with, with, with everybody. So again, you know, happy to just have a conversation. So if you want to click yes, we'll, we'll, we'll just have a conversation. Um, I'm going to go ahead and conclude here. We're going to end the poll. Um, and thanks everyone for joining today. Uh, we're going to kind of get into some Q and a, uh, if we've got any, let me, uh, try to, yeah, I'm really, there's bad. one, there's one question here. Yeah. Uh, is there a way we can use 3PL and Cargo Chief integration to send a multi-lane slash multi-volume bid from 3PL? So this integration specifically is, is load to load. Now, like we, we do have another feature called projects um, inside of C4 that does allow multi-lane bidding. Um, it's, it's, <laughs> So fun, funny you ask that because uh, it, it's really like it came as birth of COVID really. Like at the turn of COVID, a lot of companies were looking to replace the revenue lost. Um, and how we did that for them was give them a way to import their bids or their opportunities uh, inside of C4 to, to go out and procure a carrier list, whether that be somebody regular or somebody new, or even just a carrier lead, they're able to associate that, that procured list and build out like a network that that fits that lane in order for them to win that business. So short answer, not in 3PL systems or, or brokerware today, right, Anderson? <laughs> Maybe yeah. not today. Uh, it's, 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 it's kind of a, a it's the, the way that people do that today is very traditional. It's mostly through Excel. Um, so in C4, you, you do kind of have that, uh, I guess, Excel sheet transformation, if you will. So there, there is an opportunity there. Um, some of the questions that we get asked pretty often are, what does a subscription look like? Um, for C4, it's it's monthly subscription. Um, it's it's based on, on your company size. So like however many carriers you have and however many loads you're moving, we'll, we'll position you in the right tier. Um, and, and the larger you are, you know, obviously the more concession we can make, um, but it, you know, it's pretty straightforward. Um, the other thing is like, how long does the integration setup take? I know Anderson, from my, my point, it's pretty instant. We just give them a URL and they, they as, as soon as they get their subscription for C4, we can give them a URL. They click that export button and, and they plug it in. So it's kind of like day one, they could do this. Is that right? I mean, from our end, as long as, you know, they're, they put in the URL, they export it and upload it to C4, it, they're good to go. Yeah. Awesome. So I, I know some, some other tools might take a little bit longer. We kind of use the API as much as as much to the advantage that we can to, to make it a pretty quick integration setup. Um, I think this this one might be for you, Anderson. Um, probably someone wants to know a little bit more about how it's going to be dispatched status or how that dispatch status looks. Um, yeah. So from, from currently the integration, you know, I'll answer Kim's question. You know, this is currently something that, you know, when they're, when a, when a carrier 
sent, sends in con and confirms the raid and takes the load, it's automatically going to be dispatched in in brokerware for you. So correct, it's going it's automatically going to be dispatched. Yeah, I, I think that is like uh we we could probably change it, right? Like customize slightly if if we needed to based on that mm -hmm. broker's workflow, because I like it's some sometimes people like even though carriers like click accept and they want that load now, like a lot of brokers are still gonna call that carrier anyways to get that ETA to get that truck driver information and things like that. So really based on your, your kind of workflow, we can definitely talk about that. Yeah. Um, and then I think the next question is for you. Yeah. Is there a way to leverage C4's carrier base outside of the broker's current carrier list to try to get bids from new carriers to add to our network? Yes. So that that is uh, in C4, we've got over 600,000 carriers. Um, if they have a DOT and a phone number at minimum, they're going to be in C4. Now, that doesn't mean that they're going to show up on a match. Um, we we try to vet the quality uh, to, to the best standards that we can. One being that we don't include the everywhere carrier. I think that's a that's a pretty big difference from a load board in that, like, you'll you'll probably see a laundry list of everywhere carriers. Like, they, they start in Dallas, but they go everywhere. And, like, when you end up talking to them for 10 minutes, they they don't they actually don't want Florida. Or they want more miles, more than 3,000 miles. I'm like, how many more can you have? <laughs> so we, we try to try to position it to like the top options that you're going to use. Um, and, and yeah, so in C4, you'll have your network that'll be called out in bold text with a network icon. And then you'll see you'll see the difference with the, the entire C4 network. And, and from that point, up to you how your operation is, we would suggest going to projects again and, and doing that like multi-lane bid type thing if that's what you're trying to trying to do with new carriers um so there's a there's more again like we look at it more through like the lens of procurement um that will you know our our customer success onboarding program isn't just like a how-to training it's it's really like we're all former freight brokers we all have booked freight in some sense uh slung freight from broker side or sorry carrier coverage side to selling the freight uh, so we, we've got a pretty good, well-rounded team here that that is more of a consultative approach to trying to like move into this, like a better way of booking freight, I would say. I guess, uh, uh, I guess just to, you know, further to dive, uh, to dive a little bit deeper into that question, you know, obviously, you know, we know that the carriers or the broker, the brokerage will be uploading their list of carriers from brokerware to C4, but we'll, we'll, when they post a load to C4, will that allow carriers outside of their network to to book a load or they have to be within that their carrier list yeah so so that's a very key component here because again when i was talking about the uh for those that might have heard it earlier the the pipeline effect right like the more leads you have here at the beginning doesn't necessarily mean that those are on target those those could be somebody you don't want to have to have eyes on your freight like when you post a load on a load board you have no idea who's looking at that load like it, somebody could easily go go in see that load and back solicit or even inflate the market themselves i i've seen a lot of posts on like double brokering where a lot of like agents will will see that load post and they'll just waste that broker's time by calling them 40 times or whatever 40 different agents and just taking that load and reposting it themselves. So it's like, you, you really wanna have control of who you're gonna reach out to. Like, I don't know if, if any of you use HubSpot CRM, but but you have to have them as like a, a marketing contact or, or you have to have like some sort of approval of, of like being able to communicate with them. And so like, that's, that's really the best way to target your carriers. So short answer, no, uh, because the, the experience is totally different. Uh, now that doesn't mean that just because they're in, like if you've ran them Houston to Atlanta and you've got a list of 20 carriers that have ran Houston to Atlanta free in the past, that doesn't mean that only 20 carriers are gonna get that, that load offer. Like I said earlier, like customers are often three Xing their option pool. You'll, you'll very likely have like 60 carriers that are gonna get that email because, because carrier number 21 booked Houston to Atlanta with another broker in our network. 
So they they're also set up with you, but they've never ran that lane for you before. So it's 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 probably easier to explain like if I if I show you visually inside of C4. So if that's something you you would like to expand on, just again feel free to reach out to us um, and uh, definitely give you a little bit more inside look there. I think that's pretty much it. Kind of go ahead and conclude and wrap up here. So. Is a good session. Thanks everyone for joining us today. And uh, Anderson, any any last last comments that you'd like to share? Well, I you know the only thing is you know I appreciate you guys and the partnership, you know, and you know I definitely encourage you know our clients to reach out and you know to learn more and to you know look for to actually look into using integration and partnering between you know both of us. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited. We're we're here at this step. So probably probably what at the end of the week, this thing will be live. So end of the week into into early week next week so we're if you, you guys are ready to set up a call let's go ahead and do it so we made it through the storms didn't cut my power off so <laughs> all right everyone y'all have a good week uh weekend and and stay safe thanks have a safe holiday weekend bye